22 homicides in or on vacant properties. The powerful and deadly narcotic fentanyl in her system. I would wake up in the morning sick. We're losing the battle in a large way. This is a city ravaged by abandoned buildings. How bad is the opioid epidemic here in Baltimore? Terrible. This looks like a war zone. In 2021 alone, 80,000 Americans died from an opioid overdose. In fact, more Americans died from an opioid overdose than died from car accidents and even gun violence. Since I graduated high school in 2013, I've been to over two dozen funerals from classmates who have overdosed and died on opioids. The craziest part about that is, none of these deaths even made local newspaper headlines. I remember hearing the stories about how multiple classmates had died in abandoned buildings in Baltimore City, which led me to learn about all the opioid addicts that are seeking refuge inside the abandoned structures. Thousands and thousands of abandoned buildings turned part-time home by addicts in need of a safe place to shoot up. So today we venture into many of these dilapidated buildings to get a first-hand look inside Baltimore's opioid epidemic. So we're in Southwest Baltimore. Today we're with outreach specialist Nick Johns. He commonly walks these areas in search for people who need help getting sober. We're also accompanied by America's favorite YouTuber, Tommy G. You know, I think it's really important to go boots on the ground to places all around America that are affected by tough issues. And this is one of the toughest issues Baltimore's facing. The deadly drug fentanyl has been sold in Baltimore's opioids for years, and recently xylazine, aka Trank, has made its way into the supply, resulting in rotten flesh and even higher death rates. Guys, if you can just see how abandoned it is here, it is unbelievable. So there is a massive amount of abandoned buildings here in Baltimore, right? A massive amount, brother, yes. Massive is an understatement. Baltimore has over 15,000 vacant homes, many of which are used as drug dens. Let's go into one now. There's an entire boat here. There's a mattress, two twin-size box springs over there. There's a lot of stuff, and obviously it's a relatively frequented spot because of all that uh, trash. So, yeah, as soon as we walk in, you can see right away syringes yeah and i mean people i'm familiar like this is right here it's a cooker people would use that to cook up their substances that's the same thing as what the spoon is being right there you know that's a container for whatever drugs people are using but you know this is a common scene just seeing all the works laid out it's super common just everywhere try and imagine living in an area where this is happening next to your house you just got collapse you got dilapidation Police in Baltimore really aren't preoccupied with people getting high unless it's people getting high in very like upper class areas. How many needles can someone go through in a day? People around here, they're probably gonna have a few needles on them. People sell needles all over the place. There are harm reduction organizations handing out needles. Is that a good move by the city to just be providing needles to people? I think there's an apex point between where it, it does serious good in regards to the harm reduction and devolution qualities towards the environment. Should we play a game, what's in the suitcase? Okay. Ooh. Advanced plastic, plastic sheeting. You've got our shelter. A rechargeable mm -hmm. arcade card. Oh, All right. Dude. I'm gonna go hit Dave and Buster's. Dude. Appreciate <laughs> this your time. Man, see you. Hey, see you next time. Yeah, okay. thanks guys. I really <laughs> appreciate good, it. Dude. So just one step outside of this uh, abandoned building, I stepped directly on this needle hidden in the brush, exposed needle. So it definitely is a real hazard. These types of conditions are not meant for human beings. And like, I guess that's what always gets me is how powerful the pull of the drug is that someone is willing to exist in conditions like this with syringes on the ground. Stuff is broken all around them. There's trash everywhere. There's needles everywhere. How would you describe this area to people? There's a lot of abandonments, so everybody has a place to live. Do you call it abandonments? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Nobody has a real job, but everybody works. <laughs> and is it dangerous being a woman out here? Um, 100%. Is there any stories you can tell that you've experienced or people? Yeah, I've been Ooh. in alleys. I've been out at gunpoint in Ooh. alleys. Yeah. I've been Ooh. I get held at gunpoint in Ooh. child in alley. Um. Do you ever call the police? No. Do the police help? They will if you call them, but nobody ever calls. I've been held hostage three times. Much like you might have a blackout curtain in your bedroom, it looks like they've set up a comforter to block the light out, so I'm sure they can try to get sleep in the daytime. Yo! Yo! 
We can go in here if you want. I'm gonna pull out a light. It's so like there's so much so is like a scene painted here. You know what I'm saying? You had somebody that was sitting at this table, they had the candle running at the table, they were shooting dope. You know what I'm saying? They got the syringe cap off the dope. They got one right there. Can I can I tell you like this uh, analogy that I have? Absolutely. Right? So check this out. If you think about Baltimore, right? It's this like sank place and beneath the water there's all this gold and you got all these people that are like wow i hit the riches i found this gold the gold being the dope you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and it fixes my this, problem yeah it's under this treacherous water amongst all this ruin and they swim to the bottom and try to grab this gold up right but lo and behold they can't swim back to the top of the surface with their gold it's too heavy so they can stay down there for a while with all their gold but what do they really got they got a state of drowning they found yeah. you know what i'm saying Saying. So in all reality, it's pure oppression of the soul. It's detrimental and it will rob everything that you ever held dear from you. He didn't find anything. He lost everything. That's why sitting here is his temporal nirvana. False found, you know? It's like the last place we've got syringes on the ground and different couches. I mean, it is a, it is impressive in some regard, the amount of couches that they're able right. to get out the here. The amount of mattresses, like they'd be pouring them back here, you know? And here's a vinyl record. There's just so many discarded things. Pillows, two records, Gloria Gaynor. How bad is the opioid epidemic here in Baltimore? It's terrible. It's terrible. You know what I'm saying? Look at all these old, look at all these abandoned houses. A whole block is ain't nothing on the streets. They need to build these houses back up, put people back into society again, and then they they in abandoned buildings, they shoot up, they die, and don't nobody know where they in there. To the smell come out. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Baltimore, we got we gotta do better than this. Get y'all life together, stop chasing, leave the drugs alone, and y'all life will be beautiful. Don't beat yourself up. Just take your little time and then just do what you gotta do. You can't you can't do it alone. You can't. Cause I tried. And I was like, oh fuck that. What's that? What's that? <laughs> that shit. With needles inside every garage and abandoned factory we've stepped foot in, we decided to head towards the abandoned row homes that plague every corner of the city. This is one of the many row homes in Baltimore, all around, abandoned. Yo! Walking inside, it was mostly empty. No paraphernalia or people to be found anywhere. Dude, you go upstairs. Yeah, there's flies. There's also a fresh pack of um, blueberries right there. I was looking for something else. But if you look at the layout of this house, like as far as square footage and the setup, like this is a could be a really nice spot. Yeah. Are these stairs trustworthy? Did you guys do like inside? One of the cleanest houses I've seen in a minute. And you look right there, that's just one of the boarded up windows. We're just on the other side of it. This house has been cleaned out like recently. This isn't normal actually. My name's Mike Nagel. The reason I came out here was because I'm an addict yeah. and I felt like it was easier. I'm originally from Carroll County, so it was easier to obtain drugs at a cheaper price. I shoot up, right? Yeah. The only place I can actually go is in my neck. All my veins basically have collapsed or they don't work. I'll be honest with you, here's what I do for money right now. I panhandle and I go to Catonsville because nobody in Baltimore will give you anything. And uh, I am homeless technically but um, I've been staying with a friend in Pigtown. My friend Chris gets a disability, gets 100% disability. Uh, we got a nice uh, three, three story uh, townhouse and it's, it's pretty nice. Like it's got stainless steel appliances. Like I live a good life and thanks to him, so, I actually have a roof over my head. So you have a nice place to sleep at, but by day you come here, you panhandle and you get your fix. Pretty much. I do want to talk about the Trank epidemic it just seems like it's one of the most prevalent cutting agents to get put in the fentanyl at this point and it's so detrimental to uh human physical health yeah. and it's a whole other thing to detox off of the co-founding withdrawals of both fentanyl which is already extremely strong coupled with the xylazine which is almost like a benzodiazepine withdrawal so it's just a whole other level of terrible and basically it, it starts causing all of these like caustic flesh wounds to start just building up on limbs. Necrosis. Yeah, necrosis, necrotic flesh wounds. And it can get so bad where no, you have no flesh on your Yo, limb. I'm gonna hit up homegirl. Hey, yo, homegirl, you good? You don't need residential treatment or inpatient program, do you, you all right? Nick is involved in uh, you, uh, outreach, so 
if he sees anyone out here, he's going to uh, try to speak to them and get them to get into a rehab facility today and get them help today. And it's absolutely brutal. I've never seen living conditions on the street as bad as they are now in almost a decade of doing this and being really ingrained in like the trenches. I've never seen it like it is now. Yeah. It's a whole other level of depravity. And I think the Xylazine probably realistically is probably above 30 or 40% in Baltimore now because it's such a cheap cutting agent and people just don't care about their clients. It's a business. It's a business, but I'm telling you, that's a bad move for your business, honestly, because Killing if you're talking customers. about te having perpetual customers, you're gonna find that they're, you know, gonna really be muddled out in the generation. So this entire alley is just abandoned on both sides. I mean, this is, this looks like a war zone. Like, look at this, we're just in the middle of Baltimore. And every house that we're walking by right now is, destroyed, abandoned, dilapidated, broken down. I've been to a lot of cities in America and uh, this is this is not normal. Like look, this is crazy. It's like a, a, a rose coming out of the concrete. All these abandoned buildings and then look at that one. This new wrap on it, you know, freshly renovated. And you're, you're living completely surrounded by drug addiction and abandoned buildings. That boy's an athlete. Look at this heaping mound of trash, man. So we've been walking through abandoned buildings. There's Negos everywhere. Things are, I mean, this city is tough right now. Describe it to people that have never been. There's a lot of drug dealing, rivalries, addicts. They're everywhere. I guess if you were mayor, what would you do to make the drug issue be better? Keep the dealers in jail longer. They're, they're, they're not staying in jail long enough. What do you think about all the people that are living in the abandoned buildings, right? I mean, across the street, across the street the other way. What is that like having people that aren't paying rent here, don't own the building, just living there every night? They're addicts. Our local crackheads and heroin addicts. The scariest part is they'll, you know, burn candles. Several are burnt down. They've found bodies in there when they're burnt, you know, after they're put out. Finding dead bodies in burnt down abandoned buildings in Baltimore happens more often than you'd think. Firefighters Lieutenant Paul Buttram, Kelsey Sadler, and Kenny Lacayo lost their lives after a vacant row home on Stricker Street collapsed. The home had even been on fire twice before, injuring several firefighters. And dating back five plus years, we've had 22 homicides in or on vacant properties. Yeah, for me, I guess like, I've known about this stuff for a while, and I've known like a lot of people I grew up with would come down here to buy drugs, but actually being on the inside behind the boarded up windows, it's uh, pretty fascinating to see the conditions. It's hard to believe. I mean, like it's easy to watch a, a TV show about it or read a book about it, but when you actually there, walking through the needles, walking through the dilapidated buildings, and talking to people that you can just tell are in a very tough spot. How would you describe life out here? <laughs> um, crazy. Can I tell you a little quick story? Yeah, absolutely. She kind of got into a fight with this guy. And the next night we see him, you know, he apologized and everything. And 30 minutes later, we hear gunshots and he got shot and died. He was shot about nine times and we were a block away. And it was immediately after making amends with him. And it's, that's how quickly shit goes. Mm -hmm. So you can't just like up and stop and change. It's, it may have started with the choice to a degree. Everybody's situation is different. This is extra hard for me. I find myself sitting here a lot of time thinking like, what the hell am I doing? I lost my sister two years ago in April. She overdosed and uh, she was a year and 10 days younger than me. She was 25. She didn't even see 26. I didn't know for about a week that my sister was gone. And I'm still doing the same thing that she was doing. And I don't want to. Of course you don't. I don't want to. Yeah, who the hell wants to do this? No. Um, but it's also like, where, where do you start? This is not living, this is surviving. And I am so tired of surviving. I really just want to live. Started off being fun for some of us, and now it's it's a job in itself just to feel well every day, you know? And I was saying to the other guys, like, it started off with, you know, heroin, and then went to fentanyl, and now it's xylazine, which it's a horse tranquilizer. And then like, cutting it with meat tenderizer. And people are walking around here with holes, like... Rotting flesh. Rotting, and it's, it's become so common that when you, someone looks at me and I don't have those, they're like, oh, wow, like... There are things that I have to do myself first. I have to help myself. Starting number one, I gotta get my health insurance back. I feel like I'm stuck until I do that. I think Nick can help you get Medicaid. Can you really? Oh my God, see, that's perfect. So you can help with identification. So she just said that um, you know, she's in need of uh, you know, acquiring identification. She's lost her social security card, her birth certificate, her ID. And 
She doesn't have any health insurance. Without you having ID or insurance now that would get you insurance and ID retroactively. You know what I'm saying? Bill it. It wouldn't cost you a dime. They give you full case management services. They'll get food stamps, see that birth of it. Social security card, ID, job placement, all that. It'd be dead. You know what I'm saying? Only holding, only thing holding ourselves back is ourselves. You know what I'm saying? You can dead it in the moment you're in. Yeah, it's like the, the quote, don't put off today what you could just easily put off tomorrow. You know, we're in this cycle of waking up and going to bed and, you know, you got to choose the time. And that's real shit. If you want to go, like, literally, we can go right now and you can go dead it. I just want to say, like, you know, even if today isn't that day, like, you know, I really appreciate you guys and I, I hope we, we've breathed a little bit of hope or a little bit of positivity and, and shown that there is a way regardless of identification or insurance, you know, people, you, people might not know that was an option. Right. I didn't know that was an option. I had no idea. Yeah, a lot of people don't. That's what and I and researched the hell out of everything. You know? it's that, that's for everybody out there. That's for everybody out there. Drugs are not worth it, you know. Go to uh, fellowships, NAAA even celebrate recovery is a good one you know try to be active go to church go to your church groups you know kids if you're struggling with with uh drugs try to tell somebody because nobody knows unless you actually ask for help if there's anything i want to get across is that this guy and not just him but a lot of people but this guy specifically can get you help and he uh has a gofundme in the description of this that i'll be donating to and anyone wants to donate to your money will be put to good use to get people help now i'm just gonna let him speak and tell you a little bit more about that yeah so my name's nick and just kind of speaking on the services that the nonprofit that i'm forming is going to be providing also just talking about what i do on a day-to-day -day basis what i do is i go into to hard hit areas by the opioid epidemic and I day in day out do street interventions uh, with people that are in active addiction or states of homelessness in relation to active addiction that are out there on the streets and basically just, just go hey you know were you trying to seek treatment a lot of times if people are presented the opportunity in the day they're in they'll walk through that door you know what I'm saying? But if you're just getting moved around by the draws of life and you're in a day-to-day -day state of survival, that's not necessarily really accessible. What I'm really trying to do is just get people set up around the United States and, I don't know, one day hopefully even world that would be there ready to open the doors for other people's lives to unfold onto better paths. For anyone that wants to help this cause, you can donate in the description. You can go follow his social media in the description. You're not alone. There is help out there. And uh, yeah, man, we, we love you no matter the situation you're in. You're, you're a human and, and we love you. So. So, um, thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. And uh, major shout out to Nick and what he's doing for the people. Cool. It doesn't really matter what I do because I'll always stay stuck as a fool. I'll never be cool. Don't get what I want. I'm a new one. I'm way lamer than you. I'll never be cool. All the cool kids got their backpacks. Me, I made fun of and laughed at. I want to get past that. But I'm whack and I rap at. Alas, always last. What an ass hat.